I spent about 14 years of my life playing baseball, and while I didn't really have the skills to make it to the big leagues, I still love getting outside and playing catch or taking a few swings at batting cages. But it's still always different from really playing the game I grew up loving. Now, as an engineer and tech lover, I've thought a lot about how to recreate some of the most fun aspects of being in the field or on a baseball diamond, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this multi-axis, rotating and elevation changing, automatic pitch, catch, and return machine I'm calling the fielder's choice. And it's basically like Top Golf, but for baseball. And this video was a ton of time and effort, so consider leaving a like on it, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton, and it'll show me that you want to see more of this type of project on the channel. So I've had the idea to build the fielder's choice for years, but I've really needed a good kickstart to actually begin developing it. Recently, I had the chance to meet with some awesome folks from Arduino and talk about their newer industrial line of PLCs, or programmable logic controllers, called the Arduino Opta. It's a super affordable way for me to start teaching folks about industrial automation and controls, which is the field I work in professionally. So while I was working on these technical tutorials on PLC programming, HMI development, the electrical wiring, things like that, I decided I wanted to do one bigger, more ambitious project that ties it all together. And so I decided this was going to be the thing that kickstarted me building the first revision of this automatic pitch and catch machine called the Fielder's Choice. And it actually started pretty smoothly for development because to cover the whole baseball field and be able to alternate between ground balls, liners, potentially even high line drives or pop-ups, all you really need is two axes of motion and a basic pitching wheel. I bought a pretty affordable but still decent quality pitching machine at a local sporting goods store and I decided for the initial revision of this project, I was just going to retrofit the motion I wanted onto this existing pitching wheel. It needs something that can change the pitch or elevation of the pitching machine. Pitch meaning elevation here, not meaning the, you know, fastball slider curve. And since that's a linear up and down movement, I decided to grab a linear actuator. These are components with a 12 volt DC motor driving a gearbox in the base that pushes a lead nut on a ball screw down a linear axis. I had the thought of replacing the back leg of the pitching machine entirely with the linear actuator, but at that angle, it actually wouldn't get much elevation change. By developing this sort of lever system, I was able to simulate the motion of me standing at this back leg, pivoting the system straight up and down. And linear actuators are easy to control because you can just change the polarity of two wires to change the direction the actuator moves in, and you can just cut power to the wires completely to get it to stop moving altogether. So that means I can control it from a PLC or a microcontroller with just two wires off the actuator and a couple of these electronic switching components called relays. Next, for the rotational axis, I had previously used a rotary table for a different project, but it was fresh in my mind as a good option for taking a simple and cheap stepper motor and getting a nice smooth rotary motion of a larger component. Basically, with just 3D printed gears, I can mount this bigger rotary gear at the top half of the pitching machine base and fix this mounting enclosure to the bottom half. And now when I command the stepper motor to turn in either direction, I get a smooth rotation about that center pole. Now I don't actually want this system to rotate a full 360 degrees because I'm designing it for a base Ball diamond, so I really just need about 90 degrees of that rotation. I had many of these infrared proximity sensors on hand already, so I mounted a few at those 90 degree limits and I added a little 3D printed tab to the center of the rotary table so it would trigger the proximity sensors when it hits the motion limits. One thing I had definitely been intentionally putting off until I got the basic movement axes figured out was the catch and return mechanism. It's not that hard of a concept to build something that can catch a ball. Nets do that all the time. But to catch the ball, funnel it down through a system that would wait at the top of the pitching machine until a programmed sequence told it it was time to release the ball and then reset to catch the next ball, that was a little bit more daunting of a task. I got a batting practice net from a sporting goods store and just chucked balls into it for a while while thinking about how it was receiving the balls and how I might return them. And it felt like the net absorbs the momentum of the ball pretty quickly and easily. So if I elevate the net and add a funnel or pipeline out of the bottom of the net that is flexible enough to feed into the top of the pitching machine, I think we can make this work. Now the pitching machine is actually pretty high off the ground so I had to make the zone with the net and the catching mechanism pretty high as well. 
And that's actually a pretty realistic target for if you were playing catch with a friend or throwing to a first baseman with decent reach. This really only left one unknown, and that was stopping the ball from dropping into the pipe, but knowing the ball was there and ready for release and waiting for a program signal to command it to release. This was the one time in this project I felt like I actually designed and modeled something interesting, kind of unique, and a little bit innovative. And I was super excited that we pretty much nailed it. I made a port for mounting another proximity sensor to detect whether or not a ball was there. Then I side mounted a pretty beefy servo I have to, to control a little hatch mechanism. When it swings into the middle of this box, a ball can't get through, but it does break the proximity sensor to tell it a ball is in place. But then the servo swings clear and drops the ball into the pitching machine when it's time and returns to its holding position after releasing the ball. It has pillars and tabs so that it sits on the existing pitching machine easily with no special mounting required, and it has a four inch inlet so the flexible ductwork can clamp right around it. With this final piece of the mechanical puzzle ready, I pivoted to the electrical work. Now I am a professional automation and controls engineer, so this part was actually a little more in my wheelhouse, but this project still brought with it some pretty interesting challenges. The biggest one was that I had several different voltages involved in this project. The pitching wheel itself required 120 volts AC. The PLC and the microcontrollers could be powered from 12 to 24 volt DC. But then my stepper motor controller and my servo and my proximity sensors all needed 5 volts DC. And getting all of your voltages and signals right in an electrical project is obviously the most important thing. The servo and stepper motors needed 5 volt DC pulse width modulation, which is a type of signal where you switch on and off voltages very fast and very precisely to control the movement. I opted for adding an Arduino Nano to the mix that would listen to a simple on-off command from the PLC and do those 5 volt PWM signals to the motors based on those inputs. I also went out and grabbed a stack light so that while you're in the field you can quickly see some statuses about the machine. The wiring diagram shown here might seem a little chaotic and the control panel itself does have a lot going on, but the project boils down to just a few inputs and outputs. The outputs in total are the red, green, and yellow stack lights, an on and direction command for the linear actuator, an on and direction command for the rotary axis, the command to the servo to release the balls, and then the main pitching wheel on and off command. And similarly, the total inputs we're using are just the two rotary axis limit switches and the ball present limit switch. From then, making the system do something fun is just a matter of building a good program and interface for it. And to give this a more fun and competitive and repeatable kind of game feel, similar to what Topgolf does for golf, I also added an HMI, or Human Machine Interface, that can see what the machine is currently doing, and where a player can start or stop the game, or change game modes, and it tracks your previous best times and scores. And I decided I wanted to start with three basic game modes, which I call Catch, around the horn, and feel the position. And catch is kind of self-explanatory. It puts itself basically in a throwing a line drive position, and you just endlessly catch and throw the ball back, and it's not complicated, it's not moving. At this point, it's basically just a pitching machine with a catch and return mechanism on it, and I was already having so much fun. And then around the horn was a little different, and I was thinking you might want this game mode if you wanted to get a little bit of a workout in with this machine, or because you had a whole team out on the infield basically you can choose which side to start on first or third and then the machine will automatically go through a sequence of liners and ground balls all over the infield while you the player make your way across the infield getting a whole bunch of different looks and that's kind of similar to the last game mode which is fielding a specific position so you just tell it what base you're playing at and it'll go through a sequence of liners and grounders more tightly clustered to right at that position that you're playing so first set second, short, or third, you could get a wide variety of looks at that position. So while I was building this, and every time I faced a tricky challenge or setback, I would question pretty hard why I decided to do this at all, if it was even a good idea, if I should maybe just pivot to a much smaller project or finish my tutorial series with something else. But as soon as I got this on the baseball diamond and started launching grounders and liners all over the place, I felt a love of this game that reminded me of every awesome memory I had in all 15 years of playing it. And there are so many features that could still get added to this. There are so many ways to make it more robust or turned into a commercial product 
but dang it all, I am so proud of what I did build here, and it was so fun to make, and it's so fun to use, and my whole personal goal was get it built and shared before the 2025 baseball season came to a close. And here we are about to start the World Series. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Consider leaving a like on the video if you liked it. Subscribe to Lamaster Tech. These projects are a ton of time and effort, so consider checking out my Patreon linked in the description of this video. Thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters for making this project possible. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next on the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.